Alright guys, welcome to a, another beer review and um, got a piece of advice for you. If you're using your iPhone or any other smartphone, uh, other models are available and you don't want to be interrupted, use the fucking aeroplane mode because I was on a roll. I always seem to be on a roll when the videos aren't actually you will never see them um, but yeah I was hitting all those points made a mistake which I will talk about um, and no, no, not just uh, being interrupted but um, yeah it was a good video and um, now I'm having to reshoot it and pff, a good chunk of the beer has gone so we're going over to Austria today and we're taking a look at a beer from Beerol, and this is the Mountain Pale Ale, which is described as a double pale ale, clocking in at 7.3%. Malts are Pilsner and Cara, and the hops are Magnum, Cascade, Amarillo, Mandarina, Bavaria, and Citra. Best before date is 15th of the 1st, 2018. So that's where um, I made a mistake with the double pale ale aspect of this beer. Because I was drinking, well, let, let's actually review the beer and then talk about that. But yeah, like I said, I have already looked, smelt and tasted this beer, but I shall do it again. Um, so just bear that in mind while I'm doing this beer review. At least I actually tell you guys when I've already tried to review it once. I'm like, mm, some people might not do that. But um, yeah, beer in a glass, and that is a lovely, sort of like pale orangey colour. Well, no, it's not pale at all, it's only pale when you hold it up to direct light, but you know, lovely orangey, amber, slightly rust coloured beer in places. As you can see, nice and hazy. Um, it is a lot, not. A massive amount more hazy than it was when I initially poured it but now that all the bottles in it is considerably hazier and I don't know how well you can see that but there's lovely little bits at the bottom of glass and then there's a lovely cloud of sedimentation towards the center but um, yeah just look at how I don't know it's not really bright or you know that sort of uh, pale ale like some of them are nowadays, where they're almost like cloudy lemonade in appearance. But um, yeah, it's it's got a nice sense of vibrancy to it, but richness at the same time, if something can be vibrant and rich. And a beer poured with about, well, it's got about a lining half a finger's worth of, and you can tell just by looking at it, like this sort of like creamy looking head that just seems to be sticking around really, really nicely. And a nice lacing on the glass also. So it looks really damn good, doesn't it? So let's see what we get on the aroma. And it's got, and this is where I was starting to question the beer itself. It smells to me like a double IPA. Like a classic hoppy double IPA. Uh, you get that lovely, slightly sweet, caramel, cakey malt character. But then it's just lifted really nicely by a medley of tropical marmalade hop characters. It smells literally like orange marmalade. Or maybe a blood orange marmalade. It just smells fantastic, that initial sniff. And then that's backed up with a lovely hint of mango, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of lime, obviously grapefruit. Just so nice and fruity, but with a very slight resiny edge to it. And it's not a pungent, punchy, or like punch you around the side of... No, you actually hit myself then. You know, it's not going to slap you silly with that aroma, but when you really get your nose in. I just can't get the image of orange marmalade out of my head, and I want some orange marmalade on toast right now. It's got that lovely blend of fruit 
and sweet cakey malt characters. It smells absolutely fantastic and the beer's been in the glass now for about 15 minutes or so and that character has not like faded out. It's just as vibrant now as it was when I first poured it into the glass. Just smells fantastic. So uh, let's have a little bit of a taste. Cheers. It's that body. The body of this beer is just so satisfying. You'd think that they'd have put oats in this one because it's got a lovely sort of like single cream feel to it. So nice and velvety. A little bit chewy as well, upper end of medium. Gentle carbonation, just enough to help distribute the beer around your palate and then fizzle out on the tongue. It's not aggressive, it's not too laid back, it's just right. And it's just, it's got a real sense of luxury to it in terms of the mouthfeel. Again, you're hitting, getting hit with those like caramelized orange. You know, if you were to put like, if to fry up a bit of orange, you get like the, the sugars crystallizing and then that orangey fruitness. And again, orange marmalade. Didn't pick it up before, but now I'm drinking it again. Orange marmalade on the flavour. Lovely grapefruit bitterness on the back end. Very nice, subtle, piney, oily, resiny notes in there as well. 7.3%. It's drinking like it's about 4 or 5, albeit with a much more satisfying and uh, sensual mouthfeel. And it does taste like a, a nice, fruity, less harsh double IPA. Like a classic, you know, beautiful blend of malts and hops double IPA. But it has those sort of characteristics that you're seeing now with these like hazy, murky fruit bombs that we get with low bitterness. Bitterness on this one is naturally a little bit higher. But it just has this like really well-rounded and blended double IPA character to it. And uh, when I was coming to rate this beer initially, I was like, because I, I just showed it like that and it just says pale ale, doesn't it? Mountain pale ale. And you're thinking, this is a bit, it's got a bit more to it than just a pale ale, than a high ABV pale ale. And I was like, I went on in the video, initial video, going, I think they've mislabeled it. I'm going to have to like take away half a mark because of that. Because the beer itself, as a drinking experience, is just... It's one of the best beers that I've had recently. And I was sent a hell of a lot of great beers by Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews. And of course I've had beers as well that I've had uh, around that were, you know, out of this world good. But this to me is just... I didn't know what I was expecting, but drinking it, I'm like, this is just fantastic. It's, It's got the carrots of a double IPA, but it's lacking the, the harshness that you sometimes get of a double IPA, which some people, like myself, I really like that of IPAs. I like when it's a bit, you know, <clears throat> in your face, got a strong character. And uh, yeah, that was going on about how, yeah, I'm going to have to... Doctor Style, and then uh, I read that it's actually classed as a double pale ale, which then sparked off uh, an idea in my head like, what exactly is a double pale ale? Because I was un always under the impression, and feel free to correct me with this, but I was always under the impression that an IPA is pretty much like a, a heavier and more complex, it's like the next level up from a pale ale. So is it like pale ale, IPA, double pale ale, double IPA? Because it's got that sort of like bridge between them, bridge between the gaps sort of thing to it. And I was like thinking, like a little inner conflict going on, like how do I actually rate this if I was to do it like to style? 
I mean, I'm no expert, I'm no sommelier, I'm you know, not trained or anything like that. I've just, every now and then, bought a beer and I just happen to review them on YouTube. But I rarely know nothing compared to a hell of a lot of people when it comes to this sort of stuff. But from my experience, I'm like, what, what, what exactly is this beer? Beautiful beer. If I was just, just for enjoyment factor, it's 10 out of 10 every day. It's, you have to try this beer no matter what I say about this one. It's a must try. But I'm like, is it rarely to style? So then therefore, is it a well-rounded 10 out of 10? Or is it just a bias, like, I really enjoy this beer, sort of 10 out of 10? And then it got me thinking about how do I rate beers? You know, am I like going to like from the guidelines? Or am I just going from personal experience with other beers, personal flavour pre preferences and that sort of thing? And then I was rudely interrupted by a phone call. Um, and ironically, this video is a little bit longer than the one I initially made. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm at a bit of a moral quandary right now. Uh, because I friggin' love this beer. Um, it's as simple as that. But can I actually label this as a 10 out of 10 beer? Easy solution? I'm giving this beer a 10 out of 10 because it's absolutely fantastic. And if you ever get the opportunity to try this one, or any of the beers from Beer Roll, which this is the first one that I've reviewed, but I tried a couple at the Regensburg Craft Beer Festival this year, and they were fantastic. And this is fantastic as well. And they've only been going since 2014. But yeah, the, the key to this beer for me is that mouthfeel. And it's the balance and blend of it all. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's made me think about my whole existence here on BeerTube uh, and the way I do things. So um, yeah, 10 out of 10. And why did I go off on that big tangent? Nobody cares. I've never been called out on my, uh, the way I review my beers, so why am I making a point to uh, defend myself and question myself? I don't know. But um, yeah, pick this beer up from Beretta. Fantastic shop. If you ever find yourself in Bavaria, take a trip down to Regensburg. And if, of course, you're in Regensburg, go to Beretta because it's a fantastic little shop. And uh, of course, go to the Regensburg Craft Beer Festival, which is on the tail end of May. Um, I've been there three times now and I still can't really remember. 24th till 26th of May. Um, yeah, fantastic festival and I'm looking forward to next year's. But yeah, Beer Roll, Mountain Pale Ale, 7.3% ABV. Labelled, interestingly for me, some people might read that and go, yeah, I know what a double pale ale is. Well, yeah, congratulations. Um, you obviously know more than I do. But which, it's not hard really, is it? But uh, yeah, anyway. It's a 10 out of 10 beer. That's all you need to know. Now go away, buy yourself some, enjoy it, and tell me what you think of it. Uh, if not, uh, then fair enough. Um, but whatever, Austrian beer. I've had some great beers from Austria, from the craft market. You know, I'm just... I'm, <sighs> I'm dragging this out now. I'm purposely dragging this out for no reason. I'm, I'm literally trolling you right now as you're watching this. And you don't deserve it. The guys at Beer Roll don't deserve it. The guys at Beer Roll probably turn this off because they've... Oh, you gave it a 10 out of 10. Yeah, nice one. And then they're getting on with uh, brewing some fantastic beers. But uh, if you have tried it, let me know your thoughts opinions. If you've tried anything else from Beer Roll or anything else from Austria, let me know down below what you'd recommend. And give me your take on the, the idea of a double pale ale. Um, is it actually a proper style um, have I just made a big point about nothing uh, when I could have just easily gone on to the, the Brewers Association and looked it up I don't know, probably, but hey I'm the colourless drinker, I do things terribly on this website but I still somehow manage to get people watching and commenting, so um, if I can do it, you can do it and uh, look at me, I think I'm dead funny and witty, I'm not um, as most of you guys know check out Beer Roll Check out Beretta, check out my Austrian craft beer playlist, and more importantly, I hope you'll uh, forgive me and join me next time for a what I hope will be a much more truncated and less rambly beer review. It probably won't, it probably end up being a longer one, but hey ho, uh, what have you been drinking while you've been watching this? Uh, how's the weather been? How's, you, how's your mum? You know, just 
let me know about how you're doing. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Fucking idiot.